Spitfire is the best known of British pursuit airplanes. You need remember just a few features to identify the Spitfire. As its pointed nose aimed at the axis. In some views, the curved trailing edge of the electrical wing is distinct. The Spitfire is a fast, well-armed fighter. something about it, there's something about the noise it makes, there's something about the way it looks, the way it smells, and it just evokes something in everybody when you see them. The Spitfire's an iconic aircraft that is in a league of its own. It, it is of an era, um, it means an awful lot to people in the United Kingdom and around the world. If you just imagine what it did during the Second World War, not only in the air as a, as a fighter aircraft, but as a, a morale booster, if nothing else, because you'd see a Spitfire racing over your head and you'd think, wow, that's something special. So now we'll move on to the competitor. Well, well, kind of, we're cheating. This is a TR-9. Back in World War II, there were no twin-seat spits, correct? Correct. All right. So how did you train to become a Spitfire pilot then, if you couldn't sit in the back? <laughs> well, it's the same for anyone. I mean, whether you're a 109 pilot or a Hurricane pilot, there is a sudden point where you just have to take the leap of faith. RJ Mitchell, who was the chief designer at Supermarine, his kind of, his briefing, what his genius was being able to anticipate how fast an aircraft could fly uh, in the design process. So he did that, that's what he understood, and that was his, his genius. When it then came to tendering for a monoplane, modern fighter capable of over 300 miles an hour and to be equipped with eight Browning machine guns, he actually started off with one design, it turned into a complete dog, and then started all over again. What, what was it about the Merlin that made it so great? Rolls-Royce was just one of the best engine designers in the world, and you know the Merlin just was one of those engines that just was brilliant. I mean, it just worked on every single level. I mean, it, it just produced a huge amount of power, but not a huge amount of weight, which is exactly what you want from an engine. Well, the Merlin, the Merlin is the engine. The Merlin is 27 litres. 48 valves, supercharged. It can produce anything up to 1,800 horsepower. It's got, I think, something like 16,000 components within it. My name's Jerry Jones, and I'm the engineering manager here at Boltby Flight Academy. I saw my first Spitfire in about 1996, and had my first flight in one in 1997. The Spitfire would be described as a, a single engine, all metal, monocoque construction airplane, fighter, capable of 400 miles an hour, capable of 1,800 horsepower and something not to be taken lightly. There's no electronics, it's, it's all, all mechanical. There's two, two quite large companies in this country that, that look after these aeroplanes um, and it's trying to bring the, the younger generations in in order to keep the knowledge base going really because it's all passed on from, from engineer to engineer. I don't have an apprentice but um, the two of us that work here, are, you know, I've learned my trade here and. Uh, Matt, who works with me now, he's, he's learning his trade as well, so. We've, got, we've been focusing on the engine. Is there anything to know about the mechanics behind the control surfaces or anything? Uh, we could talk all day about it, really. Um. <laughs> So you would have four machine guns per wing, three, yes. or, th three or three Brownings. Yep. How, and how much ammo? 
Well, in 1940, you would have had a 14.7 seconds of eight point three or three Browning machine guns. And it's very interesting because, you know, back in 1926, there was a report made that said, I do not recommend, you know, Browning machine guns for under any circumstances. They're pea shooters, but this is what they end up with. And of course, it's because they're smaller and lighter and they're easier to fit into a wing than a cannon. Okay. You know, right. think how thin that is. Yeah, that is a very just, thin wing. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, they are things of beauty. I mean, you've, you've been up in the Spitfire, so you know what it's like. You've been in one just like this. But I mean, you know, when you look out and you see that elliptical wing and you think, wow, this has got to be one of the most iconic machines ever built, and certainly the most iconic wings ever built. Mitchell's excellent elliptical wing is that the speed range, um, or the handling characteristics throughout the speed range, remained almost identical, or remain identical. My name is uh, Michael Abbey, and I'm the Deputy Chief Pilot from the Bolt B Flight Academy. If you think about the development of aircraft, pre-war 1930s, early 30s, and how the development of aircraft accelerated so quickly. They went from rudimentary biplanes to something like the Spitfire in an incredibly short period. The, the technology uh, that they developed and invented for these type of aircraft, it still works, it, it's still there. Yeah, we, we can look at systems in the Spitfire and say, well, that's a little bit agricultural, but if you think back to when they were designing the aircraft, for instance, the undercarriage, well, this was one of the first aircraft to actually have retractable undercarriage. The Spitfire is a very exciting aeroplane to fly. It is a handful to get off the ground and a handful to put back on the ground to land it. But once it's flying, it's an absolute joy to fly. Uh, it, it's very sympathetic you know exactly what the aircraft is, is doing at all times and it will tell you, it talks to you all the time so you know if you're just about to do something that it doesn't like or you know, you're approaching a limit, it'll give you a little bit of a, a nudge and say yeah you don't want to do that. Are, are there any in-flight emergencies or any oh crap moments that you've had flying this thing? Every time I fly it's usually an oh crap moment. Uh, and it's certainly a, uh, an adventure. Um, every flight it, it really is an adventure and it's so exhilarating. It is, just brings a smile to your face every single time you fly. And I, I thought the airplane uh, looked beautiful over the water, and now over the white clouds, and it was just you and the Spitfire. <laughs>